The president, Isaac Herzog, is speaking right now. Let's I'm listen. Core from Israel and outside Israel, distinguished guests, world over. Yehudit Berkowitz has just finished the first grade and was peacefully living with her parents and eight brothers and sisters in 1941 when the Nazis invaded her hometown in Poland. She was rounded up and sent with her family to the lodge ghetto where her parents and three siblings died of disease and starvation. Yehudit was eventually sent to Auschwitz and from there to the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. On April 15, 1945, lying sick with typhus in the camp's barracks, she heard a commotion outside, the sound of tanks crashing into the fence, and then the voice of a British army officer calling out, and he said, my brothers and sisters, you have been liberated. The war is over. You are free. There are still Jews in the world. From the depth of hell of the Nazi camp, Yehudit lifted herself up. She came to Israel. She served in the Israel Defense Forces during our War of Independence. She became a teacher, established a center to aid new immigrants, and raised a beautiful family. I recently had the great honor of congratulating Yehudit on her 90th birthday. This was especially moving for me because the British officer whose voice Yehudit heard in Bergen-Belsen declaring that she was free was my late father, Chaim Herzog, of blessed memory. My father, who later became the sixth president of the state of Israel, was a World War II fighter in the British Army who took part in liberating Bergen-Belsen three months after the Red Army's heroic liberation of Auschwitz. My father related the terrifying scenes he encountered in Bergen-Belsen, scenes of barely clad human skeletons, death, raging typhus and starvation, and smell, the most terrible smell one can imagine. These scenes shocked and shamed humanity. The result of the Nazis' genocidal anti-Semitic ideology and the willingness of so many people to stay silent and turn a blind eye was what caused this shame. They contributed to the creation of the United Nations the Universal Declarations of Human Rights, the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of Genocide, and of entirely new fields of humanitarian and international law. The nations of the world instituted this momentous International Holocaust Remembrance Day. They committed to the promise of never again and created institutions and legal norms to make that promise a reality. Ladies and gentlemen, Though a great deal has been done, it is alarmingly clear that the 77 years of after the liberation of Auschwitz, the shock is unfortunately wearing off. We are seeing a surge in anti-Semitic assaults online, a normalization of anti-Semitic terminology in mainstream media, and an introduction of social media platforms refocused on Jew hatred to newer, younger audiences. We are seeing how the world's worst human rights violators are being elected to the United Nations human rights bodies. We see how, many, how radical regimes and even terrorist groups are distorting international law while some members of the academic and diplomatic community play along. We see the Ayatollah regime in Iran calling for the annihilation of the only Jewish state, initiating terrorism against Jewish communities around the world and murdering civilians throughout the Middle East while some simply look the other way. We see how present day radicalism and anti-Semitism are overlooked for economic and political gain. And perhaps most disturbing, we see how the truth about the past is trivialized. 
and alternative facts are drowning out history. This is dangerous because in the 21st century, the truth cannot sustain itself. It is our obligation to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holocaust is not a disputed footnote in history. It is the most sickening assault humanity has ever seen. Commemoration of the Holocaust is therefore not a symbolic act. It is the duty of every person, every leader, and every nation across the globe. It is mine as it is yours. When we let our guard down and ignore our responsibility, the forces of hate quickly raise their ugly heads and become bolder. When we fail to strengthen our pledge of never again, we are disregarding our debt to our past and forfeiting our rights on our future. Friends, ours is the last generation privileged to hear a first-hand account from Holocaust survivors, from a partisan, from the righteous amongst the nation. In a few years' time, the duty to never forget will be ours alone. The obligation to tell our children's children about the horrors of the Holocaust, to warn them about the dangers of anti-Semitism, hatred, racism, and ignorance will be entirely up to us. So today, let us reaffirm our commitment to remembering the lessons of the Holocaust together. Let us preserve the legacy of the Holocaust by showing zero tolerance for all forms of anti-Semitism, racism, and extremism, and by taking effective and timely measures to counter them. I call upon all nations to adopt the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance working definition of anti-Semitism, which states in the clearest of, of terms what hatred of Jews is all about. We must make it clear to all radical regimes that they will never be treated as legitimate members of the family of nations until they end their call for genocide and support of terror. We must not allow political considerations to mute our moral calls of duty and prevent us from speaking out when those who commit gross violations of human rights attempt to use the United Nations or other forums to hide or further their crimes. And we must expose and denounce any attempt to distort, rewrite, or forget what happened not so long ago. I want to thank Yad Vashem and its leadership and its chair, my friend Danny Dayan, for serving as a moral lighthouse reminding us all of our responsibility to the future. As president of the State of Israel, I look forward to working with all of you to ensure that the Holocaust and its lessons are never forgotten and are passed down from generation to generation within this